Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of strep throat. So we're going to use a particular clinical criteria known as the Centaur criteria to discuss some of the hallmark features of strep throat. So let's discuss what strep throat is before we talk about those signs and symptoms. So strep throat is also known as streptococcal pharyngitis, itis referring to inflammation, pharynge prefix refers to the pharynx or the throat, so it's the inflammation of the throat. It's going to be caused by an infection with group A streptococcus bacteria, which is a gram-positive bacteria, and group A streptococcus bacteria is going to be streptococcus pyogenes. So streptococcus pyogenes can cause multiple types of illnesses, but for the topic of this lesson, we're going to focus on the strep throat. And even when a patient does have strep throat, after they've had a resolution of the strep throat, they can have post-strep complications or post-streptococcal pharyngitis complications. And these include rheumatic fever and also post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So that's going to affect the kidneys. So this is the reason why we want to be able to detect strep throat and treat it promptly. Now the problem is that strep throat can look like other types of upper respiratory tract infections. So it can appear like viral infections, for instance. So oftentimes patients may think they're child has strep throat, but they actually have a viral infection. This lesson is going to help us distinguish whether or not a patient is more likely to have strep throat or not. So strep throat is going to be most common in children. More specifically, it's going to be more in children who are of school age. Less than three years of age, it's unlikely that patients will have strep throat, or if they do have strep throat, they're less likely to have some of the complications that can occur. But the Children within the school years are going to be the ones that are more likely to have this and also more likely to have some of the complications. But as patients get older, they're less and less likely to have strep throat, and it becomes quite rare in older adults, especially over the age of 44. We'll discuss this in more detail later on in this lesson. So the first symptom we want to look at here with regards to strep throat and helping us distinguish between other upper respiratory tract infections is that in strep throat, there is no cough. So cough is absent. If a cough is present, it's less likely to be streptococcal pharyngitis. Some cases there can be a cough, but most of the time there's going to be no cough at all. We're also going to be more likely to see exudates. Now exudates are what we see in this image here, this whitish exudate on the tonsils. So we see this whitish material on the pharyngeal tonsils. Tonsils may also be swollen. So you can see in both of these images, the tonsils are very swollen. We can also see uvular edema. The uvula is this here. So the thing that hangs in the back of the throat, it can become edematous or swollen as well. And then as mentioned before, this is a pharyngitis. So there's going to be a sore throat. And oftentimes there's going to be a sudden onset of a sore throat. So all of a sudden patients have a sore throat. That's something that we can note with regards to strep throat as well. Now we can also see lymphadenopathy or tender lymph nodes. So swollen tender lymph nodes we can see especially in the anterior cervical chain or the anterior cervical lymph nodes are going to be affected. So a location something like here in this image. So if you see a larger swollen tender lymph node in the anterior cervical chain, so anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, as you can see in this image here, if it's anterior to that, if you see a large swollen lymph node that's tender, that's going to be something we can often see in this condition as well. Now, temperature is also another important factor here. So temperature, meaning that a fever is more likely to occur in this condition. So a fever, so a temperature of at least 30 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And in if there is no fever, it's less likely to be streptococcal pharyngitis. And then age is also going to be an important factor here. We talked about the fact that a lot of times it's going to be school-aged children that are going to be affected with strep throat. And as we get older, it's less and less likely that we're going to have this condition. So younger patients are, again, more likely to be affected. Most common between the ages of 3 to 14. As mentioned before, it's rare under the age of 3. And as patients get older, less and less likely to be affected. And Again, after the age of 44, very unlikely to be strep throat, although it still could be in some cases. So that brings us to the Centaur criteria. So this can be used essentially as a mnemonic device 
to assess whether or not a patient is more likely to have streptococcal pharyngitis. I say more likely because as we increase in the number or the score of this criteria, it is more and more likely that a patient has strep throat, but it's still not 100%. And again, there's a lot of overlap in the symptomatology of streptococcal pharyngitis and other upper respiratory tract infections. So again, this is just going to be used to help us essentially increase our suspicion that it is streptococcal pharyngitis. And once we have a high enough score in this criteria, then we can do a rapid antigen test. So here is the criteria, and here is how we score it. If there is no cough, cough is absent, that is a plus one. So that gives you one point. Then if there is an exudate or swelling on the tonsils, so either we see that whitish material or we see that the pharyngeal tonsils are swollen, that gives us another point as well. Then if there is anterior cervical lymphadenopathy or nodes, so there's tender lymph nodes in the anterior cervical chain, that gives us another point. If there's a fever, so a temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius or greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, that is also another point. And then the ages, the age groups here, if between the ages of 3 to 14, that gives you one point. If between the ages of 15 to 44, no points. But if above the age of 44, that's a negative point. So we can actually remove a point. So essentially, we can see that there is a mnemonic here, the C for cough, the E for exudate, N for nodes, T for temperature, and OR, you can think of OR for the ages. So if we have at least three points or more, that will automatically often trigger a clinician to do a rapid antigen test. And then the rapid antigen test will have a quite a high specificity. So if you see a positive rapid antigen test, that is going to be enough to make the diagnosis of strep throat. So again, it's all about how many points we have. And with increasing points, it's more and more likely that we should do at least a rapid antigen test to see if a patient does have strep throat. And if the points are below three, or especially if they're very, very low, then we often will say, no, this is not strep throat. This is not streptococcal pharyngitis. So please check out my full lesson on streptococcal pharyngitis. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.